people's experiences of care really need to be our starting point in the health system. And uh, I think there's a danger that if we don't take them into account, then we spend a lot of time trying to work on things that don't really matter to patients or they don't matter as much to patients as other things. Plus, uh, where patients tell us something that do something does matter, for example, the extent to which they feel involved in their care, it will have a significant impact not just on their experiences of care, but also on their clinical outcomes and their level of safety. So a lot of the things that matter most to patients, like the effectiveness of communication, the degree of involvement, uh, the coordination of care, uh, are important to the whole spectrum of quality. They improve experience, they improve safety, and they improve clinical effectiveness. And that's why we really need to start with the patient experience. Health systems, I think, are at different uh, stages. And even within single health systems, there's quite a variety. Uh, and so we see people who are really pioneering uh, in ways of listening to what patients say and acting on that. Uh, and we also see people who are not very good at listening, that they're not very inclusive. Um, they might use quite old fashioned models of uh, listening to patients and then deciding amongst themselves what they're going to do. So I think we're, we're at different starting places. I think what uh, the Berwyn Institute argues, which is the, the Global Patient Experience Institute, is that we are entering an experience age. And I think that's right. I think there's a number of uh, circumstances of life where people have higher expectations of what they get from health services and the way they're treated in health services. Um, and there are increasing ways of making those views known. And I think there's increasing acceptance amongst clinicians uh, that uh, when you're dealing with chronic conditions rather than acute conditions, you've absolutely got to involve the patient. You've got to work with the patient as a partner. So I think there's a variety of factors that are leading towards um, health systems being better prepared uh, to deal with um, patient experience. But uh, generally, we've got some way to go. And certainly, patient experience is not currently uh, considered as the equal of patient safety and clinical effectiveness. So uh, we have further to go there too. But it's, it's, uh, we're heading in the right direction. Patient experience is really important to uh, sustainability and to transformation. I think partly because if we listen to patients, uh, then we're more likely to get things right first time and in the, in the right place. Um, and a lot of, there's a lot of waste in the system because uh, we do not coordinate care. Um, and so one intervention from a health system might be delivered late and, and undermine the effectiveness of another intervention, or we actually might uh, leave a problem to deteriorate so it's more expensive to, to treat. And so I think starting with patient experiences means we're more likely to get things right the first time. Um, and also patients uh, are very good at uh, telling us uh, simple things really cheap things to do that make a big difference. And I think when you move into a quality improvement project, there's often the nervousness on the part of the staff, and they think that uh, what patients are going to want is going to be unaffordable. And, and almost always it's not. Um, and there's a, one of my favorite studies suggests actually that um, patients suggest spending a lower amount of money on change than the staff would have spent on a particular problem. So I think listening to staff makes us more cost effective as well. But crucially, it makes sure that we focus on the right things and, and get them right earlier um, and keep people well. And that will be the biggest contribution to sustainability. There's a challenge in relation to patient experience, which is that it's often seen as a soft dimension of quality. So a lot of my clinical colleagues uh, will focus very hard on mortality data, or they'll focus hard on clinical outcomes data. And they're certainly now focusing quite hard on, on patient safety data. But uh, the, the way we communicate with people, or the way we treat people, or the way we organize care uh, can be overlooked, um, or it can be seen as being a soft part of the discipline and I think one of the biggest challenges is uh, making sure that people recognize its importance um, and you can't deliver effective clinical interventions if um, patients have a poor experience of those interventions and just won't show up for them and I think we've really seen that with people with learning disability so we want to deliver more health checks for people with learning disability but if they have a poor experience of general practice they won't come and we won't be able to deliver those interventions. Uh, so I think there's a growing recognition amongst clinicians that it's important. And one of the things that's really driving that 
uh, as we've seen an increasing number of reflections from clinicians who have also been patients and they've seen what it's like from both sides um, and they've seen the damaging effect that that has on the therapeutic relationship. Um, and uh, the classic example for us of that was a, a doctor who noticed that uh, clinical staff are poor at introducing themselves to a patient and if you don't introduce yourself to a patient you haven't got the basis for a clinical relationship uh, so she launched a campaign to challenge that so we are seeing it changing um, but it is still seen as being a relatively soft area of quality rather than the harder areas of quality like clinical effectiveness and that needs to change. We want to improve the survival rates for people with cancer and as part of that we need to uh, diagnose cancer earlier and treat people earlier. So up till now we've had a target of 62 days from cancer being suspected uh, towards treatment starting and, and that cancer target continues but in order to build on that and, and to do better we're introducing a new target which will be uh, from uh, 28 days, um, within 28 days, for a patient to either have their cancer definitively diagnosed or for it to be definitively ruled out. Um, and that will help us uh, to diagnose cancer quicker um, and to therefore start treatment earlier. So it would be a contribution uh, to improving survival rates. But it also addresses one of the things that patients say is particularly important to them, which is that anxiety while you wait to find out whether or not uh, you have a diagnosis. So by getting that result to people quicker um, and making sure it's more definitive uh, for everybody, uh, then we're really going to improve the experiences uh, of people uh, who are receiving cancer care too. I really have enjoyed being part of this um, event uh, during Patient Experience Week um, and learning about uh, the, the changes that you're bringing about here and the things that you're interested in. And it's been uh, very uh, encouraging that the kind of things you've been talking here about measuring patient experience and about expert patients and about co-production and about partnership with patients um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a world where most people have chronic conditions rather than acute conditions, are very much the same kind of issues that we're facing too. And because patient experience is a relatively new discipline uh, and because uh, it's not yet seen as being an equal part of quality with uh, safety and clinical effectiveness, it's really important to have this global dialogue because there's so much to learn from each other uh, and so much encouragement to draw from what other people are learning uh, and to try things elsewhere. So a lot of the things that we started to uh, see work in the NHS are things that we've seen work in other countries um, and we brought them over, we piloted them within the NHS and, and found that they work for us too. Um, we need to do a lot more of that sharing, uh, stealing willingly as the Beryl Institute say. Uh, so it's been fantastic to be here. I'm really looking forward to the rest of the day. Thank you.